1995 Hungarian Grand Prix was the 10th round of the 1995 season and looked very blue as Damon Hill and David Coulthard took a 1-2 in qualifying for Williams Renault. Championship leader and reigning world champion Michael Schumacher started third ahead of Gerhard Berger in the first Ferrari. When the race got underway, the best start undoubtedly came from Mika Hakkinen on the third row of the grid, but he got slightly balked behind Schumacher and Berger and couldn't find a way through. The two Williams continued to lead with Hill ahead of Coulthard and then Schumacher in third. Talking of Hakkinen, his good start was short-lived as he became our first retirement of the race due to an engine failure on only lap 4. This was actually his 7th retirement from the first 10 rounds of the season, demonstrating that Mercedes engines weren't always as bulletproof as they are today. Loser. <laughs> Meanwhile, David Coulthard was under pressure from Michael Schumacher, holding him up and dropping him back as Damon Hill stretched his legs out in front. Wealthy pay driver Giovanni Lavaggi had been almost two seconds slower than everyone else in qualifying, and he quickly became the first driver to spin out of the race. With his car covered in gravel and grass, Giovanni's next action surely would have been to visit a car wash. Let's see how many of you get that joke. As was expected for a Hungarian Grand Prix back in the 90s, the retirements came thick and fast, with Roberto Moreno retiring a few laps later with gearbox troubles. David Coulthard quite famously made quite a few mistakes in 1995, and here's one as he gets crossed up going into the chicane and allows Michael Schumacher to get underneath him and through into second place. Talking of mistakes, here's Taki Inui, the reason why you're all here. When his engine failed on lap 14, he did this. Ready? Absolutely classic. Anui suffered a broken leg in this incident, but recovered in time for the next race. Incredibly, that wasn't even Anui's first incident with a safety car that season, as he was flipped by one at Monaco while being towed behind a flatbed. I still have absolutely no idea how that's possible, as there's no footage of the incident, but there's no question that Anui had really bad luck with safety cars. Although the real question, of course, is what the Maldonado is this double shot for? David Coulthard was the first of the leaders to pit, with Hill and Schumacher both following him in a lap later. By this point in the race, Schumacher and Hill were separated by 12 seconds, with Schumacher very gradually bringing in the gap. I'm finished, I can do rallying, Wee! The Hungarian Grand Prix historically is also a race with quite a few pit stops. Here's Schumacher making his second, as Pedro Lamy in the Minardi has problems getting started. The Benetton team actually did a good job to be ready for this stop by Johnny Herbert, as not too long before they had to evacuate the garage and put out a few fires as a fuel tank spilled. When Damon Hill exited the pit lane a few laps later, it became very clear that the gap had reduced significantly between him and Schumacher. Last time I gave you an update, it was 12 seconds, now it's down to just two, and Hill has traffic in bound. Talking of traffic, look who this next bank marker is. It's Johnny Herbert in the other Benetton who makes sure that Damon gets a face full of turbulent air before he eventually lets him through, and then lets his teammate through suspiciously easily after that. Arr. Shana Lacey had been running fourth, although was forced to retire due to mechanical difficulties. Coming into this round, Ferrari still appeared to be in with a shot for the Constructors' Championship, being second place behind Benetton. However, this was very much slipping away from them. Now watch Damon Hill here, he made a very slight mistake in the S's, ran wide, allowed Schumacher up his inside, although closed the door and stopped him from getting through. That was one of the only mistakes that Damon Hill made that day, and it ended up actually helping him, since it extended the gap out to 1.5 seconds. This was a critical part in the race, as at this stage, no one was quite sure whether Schumacher was going to be able to make a three-stopper or not. Mmm, dusty. That was Italian Massimiliano Papas shortly before he retired to the pits with brake troubles, and around that same time Ukio Katayama spun and stalled his engine, taking him out of 13th place. Meanwhile, Johnny Herbert was having an embarrassing day. Imagine winning your first Grand Prix and then two races later getting lapped by your teammate and making mistakes like this. Oof is the word for that. 
Another oof bad R.I.P. press F to pay respects pro gamer bra moment happened when Mark Blundell retired with a fuel leak. He'd been running P6, and his retirement meant that both McLarens would fail to finish for the second Grand Prix in a row. Still, at least they weren't running Peugeot engines anymore. On lap 59, throttle trouble put Mika Salo out of the race, and a few laps later, Martin Brundle got very, very unlucky. He'd been running in sixth position for a while, but was forced to retire with engine troubles. With just seven laps to go, Eddie Irvine was pushing hard, getting very close to the back of Gerhard Berger and almost going through. The Jordan team was going very well at this point in the race, with Rubens Barrichello fourth and Eddie Irvine in sixth, but just a couple of corners later, Irvine was cruising back to the pits to retire. If there's one thing that you'd have picked up about this race by now, it's that it's a race for attrition, and after a hard fight with Damon Hill, it proved too much for Michael Schumacher, claiming him as its latest victim from second place in the race, with just four laps remaining. Schumacher admittedly did have a huge 21 point lead coming into this round, although this would bring that gap down to 11. So, after 77 laps, it was Damon Hill who came across the line to win his 12th Grand Prix victory, and a very well-deserved one at that, as he won by an amazing 33.398 seconds. There was a close fight to the line for P4 between Berger, Herbert and Frentzen, although by this stage Coulthard had already finished second, and Barrichello had already taken a wonderful third place for the Jordan team. Psych, he's slowing out of the final corner, and the gutted Barrichello drops from third all the way down to seventh. The Jordan team had been waiting on the pit wall to celebrate his podium, and out of superstition, they never again went up to the pit wall at the end of a race. Overall, I gave this Grand Prix an 8.7 out of 10. It was very unpredictable, with mechanical difficulties striking seemingly at random, and in terms of championship implications, it was quite heavy, uh, since Williams passed Ferrari for second in the championship, and Hill caught Schumacher up by 10 points. In terms of the on-track product, this was peak Schumacher versus Hill racing, and although it did end up being a Williams 1-2, that really doesn't tell the full story, as behind them, the battle for the podium raged all race long. I'll give the Driver of the Day award for Best Driver to Damon Hill, because I feel that this may well have even been his best drive ever, and although I really want to give the Inoue trophy to Inoue, well, I'm afraid I have to give it to Giovanni Lavaggi, who wumbled around at the back two seconds off the pace and then spun off. Drive safe guys, I'll see you next time.